Hey, how's it going? I hope you're doing well. I recently completed a build of the DR873, an eight channel preamp from DIY Racked, and I wanted to, you know, share my experience with you. I'll be trying to create a series of videos, including sound demos and tutorials, but this is just kind of a general summary to focus on the overall building process. I know diving into a project like this can feel super intimidating, so I want to try and provide as much documentation as possible to encourage you guys to try and take on the project yourself. A bit about me. My name is Isaac and I make a living in music. I record, mix and produce bands and artists from a shipping container studio I built myself in 2023 called General Waste Studio. I also play in bands and compose a lot of music for film and TV. Why I took on this project? During my first year in the studio, I'd been tinkering away with the space, upgrading equipment as needed, and generally just striving to try and improve the workflow and quality of my recording environment. One area I focused on initially was the preamps. And to begin with, I was using a Focusrite 18i20 connected to a Behringer via ADAT for a maximum of 16 inputs which was good, but it had its drawbacks at times. As my studio grew, I needed something more powerful and reliable, and I found a secondhand Antelope Orion 32, which was perfect for my needs. However, unlike the Focusrite, it didn't have built-in preamps. When searching for preamps, you will likely come across one of the most talked about options, the Neve 1073. This preamp is renowned for adding a unique color to the soundstage that is very distinct to the unit. I knew I wanted a preamp with character and vibe and as I researched I found multiple choices available. There are original Neve units as well as various replicas of the 1073. However for me the prices were eye-watering. After talking to a fellow and an engineer friend of mine Ian Sadler he introduced me to the concept of DIY audio builds. I'll be honest I was terrified of the concept. Despite my history of taking on super ambitious projects, I just couldn't see myself ever understanding the inner workings of something like this. However, I continued to research, watch videos, of which unfortunately there are very few, and came to the conclusion that it was worth a shot. I could save hundreds of pounds and learn a brand new skill which I found to be incredibly liberating. As an audio engineer, going that step further to understand the workings of your hardware seemed like it could be an invaluable opportunity. I stumbled across a few options in terms of the DIY builds, but nothing quite like this one from DIY Racked. Every other option was for an individual 500 series preamp, and it felt better for me to just complete eight preamps in one go. After all, why wouldn't I not just completely throw myself in at the deep end? From what I found, this was also the most cost effective option. Individual 500 series preamps would require a power supply, potentially adding 200 to 800 pounds to the total cost, depending on what type you choose. What is the DR873 from DIY Racked? Well, according to their website, the DR873 is described as a class A eight channel preamp DIY project which will emphasize that Neve essence. It will add a texture and emotion to the soundstage that is nearly unattainable with any other unit. There we go, and the kit includes eight preamp channels, an external power supply, phase switch, volume fader, phantom power, LED signal indicator, and the obviously iconic gain switch with the classic Neve style knob. DIY Racked provides partial kits for their projects, which means you receive the three U outer casing, eight DR873 PCBs, one for each channel, the main PCB board, and a kit for the external power supply. If you're more experienced, you can order the necessary parts from anywhere based on their bill of materials. 
Now, if you're less experienced like I was, their personal shopper option can be incredibly helpful. They were very responsive to my questions and believe me, I had plenty. So please don't worry if you feel overwhelmed. How was the building process? Overall, I feel I was pleasantly surprised by how well I did with this build, especially considering I had little to no prior experience. I was initially quite terrified to start. I received all the parts in the summer, but didn't begin building until around October. I felt I needed to kind of psych myself up and get into the right mindset. But when I eventually did start building, I actually found it surprisingly enjoyable. It is incredibly time consuming, don't get me wrong, but once you get the hang of the PCB soldering process, it actually becomes quite fun and satisfying to see it all come together. It's important to remind yourself that there is no rush and just take your time, you know, I cannot emphasize that enough. While it is possible to desolder and replace parts, it's not very fun and can get messy. Once the boards were complete, things got a little bit more complex. Soldering small wires and building rotary switches was a bit tricky but fairly manageable. Since it's an eight channel preamp, I had to learn some very daunting tasks and basically just repeat the process eight times until I felt comfortable. And actually this repetition was a great way to learn and practice. Overall, this project was not only a lot of fun, but also a significant learning curve. I'm so glad I took my time and asked plenty of questions during the process. The only downside was the lack of documentation, which is kind of why I reached out to the DIY rack team so frequently. It was really important for me to understand every aspect and since this was a completely unique build, I often struggled to find answers elsewhere. My aim for this video series is to provide the visual documentation and support I wish I had during my build. I'm really confident that with my guidance, even a complete newbie to DIY projects like I once was can successfully tackle this project and many more in the future. In a world where young producers and engineers are bombarded with advertisements on social media, it's so easy to feel that spending thousands on expensive hardware is the only way to, you know, validate your skills. However, there's something truly empowering about building your own tools. Doing this not only helps you appreciate their practical use, but also keeps you grounded, free from the influence of brand names. Plus, you know, you've created something unique for your studio, something you can genuinely say you crafted on your own.